Okay, we've got Brody here, and I'm at the um, the, uh, the Discovery Center in Gross Morn National Park, at uh, and the location is Rocky Point. Is that right? Woody Point. Bro- uh, sorry, Woody Point. Woody Point. Okay, very good. So he's going to talk a little bit about the place where I'm planning to uh, hike is at the Tablelands, which is just uh, west of here, maybe about 10 kilometers. Yep, it's around five minutes from here. Five minutes from here. Okay, go. So rock, um, uh, Brody's going to talk to a little about the rocks around this area. So if you imagine over half a billion years ago, you had these two continents. One is Laurentia, which is ancient North America combined with South America. The other is Gondwana. It's all of Asia, Africa, India, Antarctica, all combined into one continent. Between them, they're separated by the Iapetus Ocean, kind of like the precursor to the Atlantic. And due to plate tectonics, these two massive continents slowly drifted together. And so the ocean crust that existed between the two continents was eventually pushed over the top of the Iapetus, along with some of the existing mantle beneath. So as this ocean crust was pushed straight up over Laurentia, it was sort of left there until the continent started to recede. And so once Gondwana had pulled away from Laurentia, we were left with this massive chunk of mantle sitting on the ancient remains of Laurentia. And as the continent shifted around, North America moved more north and South America broke off eventually. And it led to modern-day North America, Europe, Asia, South America, and Africa. But what happened with Gross Morn is that all of these rocks were eventually combined into one strange story that could not be explained by any theory besides plate tectonics. So due to the existence of the Tablelands, we were able to prove our theory. So once this mantle had been pushed up to the top of Laurentia, it sat there with the ocean crust above it. And over the half a billion years that's passed, this ocean crust has eventually eroded away, leaving just the exposed peridotite, which is the mantle rock, sitting on the very top of the tablelands. And over that time, there's been glacial action, many different types of erosion. The mantle rock itself is very unhappy at the surface, so it actually oxidized to the yellowy color you see down here. So naturally the rock is black like this, but due to erosion it gets this sort of golden crust. Right. And so if you move over this way, we have all the rocks of the park. So we have the quartzite, which was the bulldozed remains of an ancient beach that was actually tropical. It's actually beautiful. Yeah, and so this part is polished, and then this is the normal section do, of quartzite. Do, do, is it mined for, for, for countertops and things like that? Uh, I know it's in a park, so they may not want you to remove anything. Uh, we can't mine anything in the park, but other sources may very well be mined for that. Right. Uh, the quartzite here is very hard, and it was actually used as a hammer stone by indigenous people when they were napping rocks wow. to make stone tools and such. Like, look how beautiful this is. I mean, it's shiny, and it's just so now that looks like marble almost. It does, and it's actually very similar to granite. So this pr- it's pronounced nice. And uh, it's very similar to granite, but it was formed in a higher heat and pressure, and that sees these bands that were separated by the heat and pressure. So in a granite, you're going to see those little specks all throughout. In a nice, you're going to see these beautiful little stripes like that. And so the nice is the ancient Laurentian mountain chain, and it's just slowly been eroded away. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just pause it, and we'll do the next level.